You know, ever since I was a little boy, I've dreamed of conducting a photographic experiment to see if I can replicate a full color photograph using only three black and white images. So today, we're gonna get the chance to try just that using the three color method. Red, green, and blue are the primary colors of light, which behave in accordance to the additive color mixing system. So what this means is that if you add them together in equal proportions, you get white light. When primary colors mix, they produce secondary colors, which are cyan, magenta, and yellow, with white in the middle where all three overlap. By mixing red, green, and blue at varying levels, you can create almost any color. With no light, all you see is black. In digital imaging, RGB values are visually expressed as color channels. Here's a picture of me on my birthday with my best friend, Harold Dwyer. Ooh, that was a crazy afternoon. Now, color channels are black and white representations of the RGB values within an image. Lighter shades represent a higher intensity of that color. So for example, the red balloon appears lightest in the red channel because it has a high red value whereas the same balloon appears much darker in the green channel because it has a very low green value. As you can see here in the green channel, the green balloon now appears to be the lightest of the three. All right, Blue, I didn't forget about you. Who's a good boy? Other colors are produced by simply varying and mixing these values across each channel. So, as you can see, you can digitally separate a full color photograph into three black and white color channel components. Now, we're going to see if we can reverse that process and take three black and white photos to create color. To get started, here's a list of items we'll be using to conduct our experiment. A 35mm camera, various RGB color gels, Ah, okay. Moving on. And Kodak's classic Tri-X 400, which is a panchromatic film, meaning that it's sensitive to all colors in the visible spectrum. When you look through a color filter, it's effectively filtering out all wavelengths outside of its own hue. Another way of thinking about this is that it's only allowing that specific color to pass. So for example, with this red filter, it's only allow allowing the red wavelengths to pass through when blocking all other colors, which is why you only see red. Now the same is true of green, blue, really any color filter that you'd be using, they, they all behave the same way. So I have a variety of different gels that, that we're going to test out today, and we'll have to see which ones give us the best result. First, let's find something to photograph. Oh yeah, the camera loves you. So we found our scene and we've got six gels. We're going to take a shot with each one and that way we'll be able to compare the slight color variations between each set. So let's get started with red. You know, I think this darker set is going to work a lot better just because the colors seem a lot more vibrant. Also, this scene will be interesting because the cars won't be in the same place from shot to shot, so we're going to get this weird ghost image effect in the different color channels.
We've developed our black and white film and we're scanning our last strip of negatives. Let's pop into Photoshop and see if we can make a full color image. Here I've loaded all of the photos into their corresponding channels. So the photo taken with the red filter is in the red channel, green in the green channel, and blue in the blue. When you combine them all together, voila! Now you'll see there's a strong blue color cast, but with a few adjustments, the colors look much more accurate. Now since the cars were moving in this shot, they don't line up between each channel, which causes a colorful multiple exposure effect, illustrating that this process is best suited for non-moving subject matter. Let's see what it looks like through the second set of gels. Notice the red channel is quite a bit darker. I accidentally underexposed by not compensating for the light lost due to the density of the filter. Now again, when all three channels are combined, we have a full color image. It's really underexposed, but nothing a few levels adjustments can't take care of. Now even after each image has been adjusted to look its best, the image on the left looks flat and muddy when compared to the colorful and saturated image on the right. You can really notice this when you compare the blue color in the sky, the reddish color of the church, and the green in the trees. The reason for this is because we use the darker set of filters, which do a much better job of filtering out wavelengths into their corresponding color channels. Now with the shot on the left, we use the lighter set, and because they're less dense, they allow for a lot of overlap between the color channels. So we've actually captured red light in our green channel, blue light in our red channel, and this cross-contamination is what's causing this final image to look very desaturated and just not as good. So from now on, we'll only be using these colors, and we can go ahead and get rid of these. This image of a car crash that I definitely didn't cause is another good example of how moving subjects can create color shifts. Now overall, the colors look pretty accurate and true to life, but there is one issue that snuck up on me. I thought since everything in the shot was static, I wouldn't have any issues, but it was only afterwards that if you zoom in, I noticed the reflection of the clouds had moved just enough to create a color shift over time. Sneaky, sneaky. Another thing to keep in mind when you look at any single color channel is that you're only getting one third of the color information. So looking at these spoons in the green channel, you'll notice that these five in a row all look the same, which might lead you to believe that they're the same color. But if we click over to the red channel, or the blue channel, you'll quickly see that that pattern changes completely. So let's see what color they actually are. Surprise! They're not the same. The only reason they looked the same in the green channel is because they all have the same green value, but differing values in the red and blue channel, thus combining to produce different colors in the final result. Now, I've saved the best for last, my absolute favorite, you're gonna love this. So in this next example- No, actually it's time for the conclusion. Already? Yeah, we need to wrap it up. I've got plans. Ah, what are you getting into tonight? Harold's Masquerade Ball. Harold's Masquerade, wait, what? Just make me full screen. I don't understand why he wouldn't invite me. We're roommates. Wrong way. I'm trying. You know, I bet you it's at Judy's apartment. Judy this, Judy that. You know what? I'm going to go get a mask right now. Stupid Judy. In conclusion, I conclude that this experiment was a success. It's pretty amazing that you can create color using only black and white images. What's even more amazing is that this technique dates back to 1861, in which James Clerk Maxwell and Thomas Sutton created a color photograph of a tartan ribbon. Now, tartan is a traditional Scottish fabric woven into a plaid-like pattern. 